welcome to the third ever Hashtag United end of season awards. Actually, our first end of season one, because the first one we've had a proper season. But obviously, three years ago, or more than three years ago, and we did our first one. We had no idea if we were going to get to do a second one or a third one. Not only are we here for a third one, but we know we're going to be here for a long time. That's thanks to a lot of people in the crowd. So give yourselves a round of applause. I do feel like something's missing, though. I feel like we need something extra. Um, Seb, you got something for us? What's this? Go on! Don't break it. Right, put it there very carefully. This is, the, this is actually a new trophy, because Jack broke the first one. I want to welcome everyone that played a minute for the first team up here now to come up with Devs as well, the gaffer. Give him a round of applause, first team players, let me come. Don't be shy. Basically clearing out the crowd here. I'm just going to use this opportunity, one, to get a good photo of the squad, but also to ask some questions. Devs, first of all, take a look around at the squad you've put together. I helped you a little bit with some of them. Did you think that uh, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, when we started the season, we'd be sitting here with a trophy? Uh, possibly. Possibly, okay. <laughs> I realise now I'm fancy myself as a miracle worker. <laughs> Obviously, we've had some great moments uh, lifting the trophy and, and winning it uh, with the draw at Hackney Wick was, was up there, but any other moments that stand out for you as gaffer? I think it's really difficult to pick out individual moments in a season where there's been so many highs. I kind of look across the season, I think there's been a, a lot of landmarks. Um, there's been points where I think, yeah, um, kind of maybe a turning point or a moment where I thought, we were in a good place. If I had to pick out a highlight, the final whistle against Hackney yeah. Wick. <laughs> Round of applause for that from Devs. <laughs> got to say as well, Devs has obviously had his plaudits this season. We've got people calling for a knighthood. It's a bit premature in my opinion. Um, one other reason that Devs is great though is he never gives you one word answers. Maybe too many words sometimes, but it's good for YouTube, so well done. Right, we're gonna get a quick photo of everyone. Hope you've got a nice wide lens. Now the awards really begin. Uh, we're going to have different people from the club coming up to present these awards throughout the night. He's just been up here a minute ago, but to present top goal scorer, I bring you Captain Jack Harrison. Welcome back. So, uh, yeah, goal scorers, all competitions. I've got the pleasure of doing the award. In fourth place is a goal scoring centre back. I'm not going to lie, he's good looking, he's a leader. It's Jack Harrison. Well so third place, we have one of the originals as well. Ryan Adams with 16 goals. Oh, 10 goals. 10 goals? Is that it? I know, but I'm a defender. No worries. Um, so second place, with 13 goals and a worse goals per game ratio than the centre back, is Harry Honesty. And then the winner, who averaged a goal every 147 minutes, or 0 0.56 goals per game ratio, which is a more than a goal every other game, is Neil Richmond with 22 goals. Neil Richmond, obviously new signing this year, he's come in, he's bagged 22 goals, could have had 44. Um, well, and the rest. How do you feel about your first season hashtag, Neil? Yeah, I've enjoyed every minute. Um, I think it's fair to say I should have had a few more goals. There's no hiding from the highlights. I mean, yeah, we give him a hard time, but let's face it, he's got 22 goals, he's won us a lot of points. Let's give him the credit he deserves. Neil Richmond. Thank you. Legend. Oh. What is it with Jack Harrison? This is a trophy. I didn't win that one, so I didn't want to. He just doesn't like trophies. Yeah, buzzing, as everyone will laugh. Um, been a great season. Uh, glad I joined. I said, Ellis just pointed out to me on the video that I said in my first interview in pre-season that I came here to win something. And I'll, well, I'm happy that we won it. Most assists. This is the last award that everyone probably already figured out the winner for. The rest will be a bit more of a mystery. Uh, presenting this one is a man who's won this award for the last two years in a row. Unfortunately, he's going to have to relinquish it tonight. Ryan Adams. Um, it's an honour to be up here. Obviously, being here from the beginning, you know, it's very special to me and I'm happy to award this, this award. Um, in third place, it's actually got two joint people. It's me and Richo with eight assists each. Uh, in second place, we've got Tom Williams. I think he'd argue he's probably got a few more um, with just 10 assists. But there was only ever going to be one winner um, with a, an assist every 0.37 assists per game. 
more than assists to every three games is Harry Honesty. Triple H, I gave him that name, it stuck. Harry, talk to me, how'd you feel? Most assists in the season, did you expect that? No comment. <laughs> I don't really know what to say, no. Uh, I expected a midfielder to get it. Oh wait, I'm a midfielder. He yeah. doesn't know what he is. <laughs> we got midfielder. We're still trying to figure it out. Um, <laughs> you've done very well, they've got 14 assists this season. It's double decent. Again, I think another one like Richo, we give a bit of stick to, but you can't argue with his stats. He's done tremendously well. I hope you've enjoyed your first year, would you say you have? Yeah, no, it's been unbelievable. Um, Richo, I'm um, coming for you next season, Ooh. by the way. Challenge! Well, fantastic. Well, let's have a quick photo of you, boys. <laughs> That's the wrong way! That's right. That's right, mate. What? <laughs> hey, hey, I think I've had too many drinks. <laughs> uh, the season's been great. We had a good season. It could have been a little bit better. Um, I feel like we should have had a double. I'm not going to lie. We should have won a cup, but we didn't get everything. <laughs> um, Ryan's telling me, by the way, it's the wrong way around. I don't know how to hold a trophy. Uh, but no, the season's been great. We got promoted, we won the league. That's all that matters at the end. Next up, it's the best new signing. Now, this is going to be obviously sponsored by Football Manager. I want to say a huge thanks to Football Manager, not only for supporting this category, but for their support all season, you know, only sponsoring our shirts, but putting us in the game. We've got to have a round of applause for that. <laughs> Having our own game. Come on. Unbelievable. If anyone watching at home hasn't played the Football Manager version, hashtag United Special Edition. Get involved, check out the link in the description to present this award for Best New Signing. Please let me welcome the Studio Director of Sports Interactive, the main man at Football Manager, Miles Jacobson, OBE. <laughs> Got an OBE! So the Best New Signing, obviously there have been quite a few signings this season. So uh, all the new lads, have adjusted very well. I've been watching lots of them on uh, on YouTube. Um, and this award, really important, was voted for by the fans. So thank you very much to everyone who's been tuning in throughout the whole season and for voting for this award. In third place, with 16.6% of the votes, Neil Richmond. In second place, with 23.4% of the votes, Farai Singano. And the winner, with 28.1% of the votes, and hopefully you can learn how to hold a trophy this time for the photo, it's Harry Honesty. How do you feel? Are you right. okay? Not going to lie, I didn't expect this one. I genuinely thought uh, Farai was 100% going to win this. Thanks, Steve. Now I remember why I'm here. <laughs> just run, H, run. We didn't yeah. expect it, but you've got it. Have you got anything you want to say to the fans watching at home, perhaps down that camera? Thanks yeah, for voting camera. for me, perhaps. Just next to the red light there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for everyone for the votes. Um, I really do literally appreciate all the support that we get as a club and as an individual. Thank you for allowing me to win this. <laughs> I like that. Guy. What's your handle? What's your Instagram handle? Uh, don't follow me on Instagram. I don't follow me. Follow Baby Couchy, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, some people, it's amazing, some people are just cleverer on the pitch. Uh, let's have a <laughs> Unbelievable. What a strange man. Um, Harry, not, not Miles. Harry. Um, okay, next up, it's a big one, another fan voted one. It's the goal of the season, and it's going to be presented by Miss Alex O'Shipjack. Pleasure to be up here tonight to present this award, the best goal of the season 2018 to 19. Now, we've had some absolute crackers this year, some real wow moments. And the best thing about filming our games is that we get to capture those moments and relive them. I'm sure half our views come from you guys watching yourselves back. There can only be one winner. In third place, oh, by the way, this was voted for by the fans. In third place, with 14.3% of the votes, was Ricky Evans versus Burnham Ramblers. In second place, with 16.3% of the vote, Mr. Albie Keith versus Braintree Town Reserves. 
And so in first place, with an incredible 46.6% of the vote. Drum roll, please. Mr. Charlie Morley versus Holland. Great goal. Well done. Congratulations. Not the first time you won this award. No, it's not. How does it feel? Well, I've got two this season on both free kicks. Um, I thought. I, I, I actually thought Ricky would win this, to be honest. I genuinely did. Like, Who did you vote for? Did you vote? Yeah, for Ricky. Fair play. Yeah. Fair play. I even put it on my Instagram story. Well, you won anyway. Let's give this lad the acknowledgement he deserves. What a season. What a lad. I appreciate it. Two years running. I um, only scored two goals this year compared to a lot more the previous time I got awarded this. But uh, it's, still, it's still good to be recognised by the fans and everything. And um, I get one a season, just like Ricky. Next up is a new award. Ooh, new award, we haven't done this before. Obvious reasons as to why we've added this. Before I get up, the person that's gonna present this award, just to say quickly, one of the big challenge, challenges for us this season was obviously going to having games regularly in front of a crowd, uh, home and away, having to allow people in, whereas before it had been our choice as to whether we opened it, now we were open to the public. And we've quickly established a nice little fan base, but I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's come to any games whatsoever. Whether it's one game, whether it's you know, Tony in the crowd, it's been to 32 this season. I think some people maybe more than that. So amazing. Round of applause. <laughs> this award is someone that probably could have won this award, to be honest, the person who presented this award. What a support she's been all season. The loudest fan in non-league football. Not easy to do. Cindy CV, come on. <laughs> Um, as you know, I'm a very shy person, so coming up here has been very difficult. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so, fans are very important because whilst you are all great on the pitch and, you know, Mikey, all the people that do the stuff behind it, in the office and everything, but on the day, you know, it's that noise that drives you to score those goals. It's that sharing that passion with you. And, you know, we have fans, but we have a family. And I'm very pleased and very proud to be able to give this award tonight. You're all wondering who it is. But we had, this is our first time we have this award and hopefully we'll have many more. But it gives me great pleasure to say that the winner of this award is Alfie. Uh, Alfie. Going, we, uh, he's, he's going to the next away game already. Um, <laughs> Alfie. We never met you before the first game of the season. I don't think, I don't know if you'd interact with anyone. I'd certainly not come into contact with you. I miss those days. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, how did you get into Hashtag? How did you end up being a fan? How many games have you come to? Tell us your story, but keep it concise. I tell you what, and I, I do genuinely um, accept the award on behalf of all the super fans who have really... Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm fantastic, but I'm not, it's not just me. I mean, we really are a great group. I mean, and I, and I know this is true of everyone who, who's, who's part of Superfans, that we're all uh, massive fans of yourselves. Um, and I mean, you're a great man, don't get me wrong. <laughs> And I've then met some absolutely fantastic people who have, we have then made a fantastic channel. So to anyone who's watching this who has subscribed to our channel, thank you so much. And it's subscribe if you don't already. Genuinely. Get a photo. I mean, I'm ecstatic to win the award, but at the end of the day, it's a group effort, the account we put together. It's been a fantastic season, and all I can say is, if we can do anything similar again next season, then, well, it'll be amazing. It's On the subject of fans, the next award is a fans voted award and it's for the fans player of the season and presenting it is someone who's been at a lot of games this year, he's been a bit of a fanboy himself, I don't know what sort of, uh, sort of state he's in right now but hashtag Harry, get, come on down. Here he is. Yeah, last time they gave me a mic at one of these they cut it from the video so I'll try to keep it clean this time. Um, Fans player of the season. Um, we have probably the most unique connection with its fans of any club in the world. So treasure this award. Don't take it on the night out and drop it like I did last time. And in third place with 14.6% is for Isangano. <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen that 34 people voted for Jamel Akeem. 
34 in total. How, how many were the total points? I have to there, but he could have done them all himself, technically. Yeah, <laughs> probably did. In second place, um, I think he should have won it because he has the best name in history, is hashtag Harry Honesty. <laughs> Winner of the Fans Play of the Year 2019 is an original, it's Jamie Jackson, AKA Jacko. <laughs> Jacko, you've done it. You've won fans play of the season. Voted for by the fans. Special? Over the moon. That is his over the moon face. You don't want to see him when he's actually angry. It's, it's been a bizarre season, really. Um, at the start, there's no way I'd have thought we would go anywhere near it. Um, credit the devs, obviously the boys that turned it round. Um, it's, it's, it, we've, we've done well. We've got a good set of players. There's a certain spirit about the team and uh, he showed, he showed through the season. Jacko is another one of the lads who travels a, a really long distance to games. He was also one of the masterminds behind our move to Tilbury. He's a big fan of that move. No. Yeah. <laughs> See that one out. Um, can we get you on the record now to say you're going to stay for one more year, Jacko? No. <laughs> really? God bless Tilbury. Good luck. <laughs> uh, to be continued, is there a photo? Juffed. Um, Obviously, it's nice to be recognised with any award at the, uh, the evening, um, but to get the fans player, believe it or not, I do have a good rapport with the fans. I know everyone bills me as the scariest man in football, but anyone that comes to a game will know there's a, there's a different side to me than the one that's portrayed on camera. Um, I wouldn't say lovable, but I'm quite a, quite a nice guy, really, and uh, hopefully this represents that. Um, this is an award formerly known as the Clubman Award. We've rebranded it mostly for alliterative reasons. Um, but it's the, it's the Clubman Award. It can go to anyone on or off the pitch for outstanding contribution to the club. So someone that has given us an outstanding contribution has just been recognised for it. Jamie Jackson, come and present it, please. This year's award, the, the hashtag hero, will be shared by two people. As quite frankly, you couldn't award it to one without the other due to their commitment to the cause. These two people who form an amazing team have made a huge difference to us this season. We couldn't do what we do on the pitch without their tireless work and enthusiasm. And without them, I can honestly say there would be no hashtag United. I could honestly say there'd be no Spencer, Saunders or Seb. They do it all for the love of the game and the love of their family, including the 40 plus surrogate children they look after every Saturday and Sunday. It's my absolute privilege and pleasure to present the Hashtag Hero Award to Mr. and Mrs. Hashtag, our mum and dad, Cindy and Stevie CB. Well done, guys. Thoroughly deserved. Um, question for you, mum. Uh, we've obviously, you've had to put up with a house of boys for so long. You've had dad doing non-league stuff for a long, long time. Yeah, hashtag come about for a few years. We had a little anecdote for you. We, when we went to America for the tour, we had all three brothers um, and dad away, and it was Mother's Day while we were away. Uh, it's an easy way to upset, and it did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. My question to you, Mum, is how's this year been for you? Because we managed to get you on the other side. You're on board of it now. You like football. Yeah. <laughs> she loves it. To be fair. Um, how, how have you enjoyed it? I love it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work for a large automotive manufacturer, and every time I, I go, you yeah. need anything. <laughs> no, but every time I go to a dealer. That's a car manufacturer dealer, guys. <laughs> Bloody hell. Just to make that clear. She's got to be on something. <laughs> I asked them, who's your favourite football team? And they, you know, they say the usual, Man City, West Ham, Arsenal, whatever. And I say, I am very proud to say I'm a hashtagger. And do you know what? More and more people know who you are. And that makes me very proud. I love the club. I love all of you. Whee! <laughs> well, follow that, Stevie. Dad, how's this year been for you? Obviously, you've had many, many years doing great physio work, um, but this year you've had mum alongside you for the ride. Yeah, for the first time, Cindy's come along, joined non-league football, and she wins an award. <laughs> <laughs> you got to share it with her. Um, how do you feel to be recognised as hashtag hero, but also to do it alongside your lovely wife? Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, I've, I've done this for a few years in non-league, but I can honestly say the last, uh, few years with Hashtag has been 
half me emotional. We're watching the boys come along, obviously you and your two brothers. Um, getting away has been difficult over the years, but this year has been a little bit easy because Cindy and I have been travelling together. We don't see much of each other during the game because she's doing hospitality and I'm doing other things. Um, but it's made it more enjoyable. My wife joining me. Oh, get a room. Well done, guys. Quick photo. Quick photo. Uh, really grateful. It's been a lovely year. It's been really nice not only to be able to spend it with my boys because it's the only time I get to see them. But um, I have met such lovely people and that includes you too, Neil. It is a great family to be a member of. Really great. It's been an uh, absolute privilege to be able to spend this time uh, with Hashtag Family. With our boys it started off with, we never knew how far it was going to go. Uh, from, the under 18 team right up to now to a first team in non-league. It's been brilliant. Uh, I'm loving every minute and now I'm glad that Sydney's loving it as well. <laughs> Sunday league team has been around a couple of years now. It's the first time they've been officially recognised at an awards. I call them the reserve team. Dev doesn't like me to call them that. I think we're the reserve team personally. Um, there's not a lot of movement between the teams, granted, but really important. I, I, I play in this team. I love playing in it every, every week. Keeps me fit. More or less. I don't even play myself that often. That's enough about me. Um, this is, we've got two awards for Sunday, boys. This is for the Players' Player of the Year, so voted for by the players. And to present it, one of the least popular players in the club, David Hopwood. So, as you might, some of you do know that I, uh, on a part-time basis, take over from Spencer when he's not there. And that can be quite difficult because not only do we not have our manager, we don't have the guy that has to take every free kick, <laughs> every corner, has to be the captain, every throw in. Have I missed anything else? Uh, I didn't give penalties, you said, I didn't do that. Because you bottled them. <laughs> anyway, Sunday, Players Player of the Year. Um, in joint third place is Maverick Gore and Matt Creasy. <laughs> joint second place, George Valentine and Zach Clark. And the winner who got the joint most Man of the Match awards, which was free, and managed to score four goals from centre half, my main man, Marcus Stamp. Yeah. We talked and we joked a little bit about it being a reserve team. There's not a lot of movement between the sides, but you are someone that has played a lot of games and been involved in a lot of squads for the first team, as well as the Sunday team. We're very grateful to have you because you've won us a lot of games. How have you found playing the Sunday boys this year? I mean, it's just like last season, really, it was great. Like. The boys are just so committed. Like I know, I voted personally for Zach. I wanted Zach to win this because I know how serious he takes this. And yeah, it's just been a great season. I'm really glad as well to finally, finally win the league. Me personally, I've never actually won a league title. So to win two in the space of what, two weeks? And it was a bit, it was just a little bit, a little bit more special with the Sunday boys purely because we bottled it last season. So it's great to- Well, we lost on goals scored, so I wouldn't say- Yeah, but it's still, it's, it's redemption. It's redemption, I'll yeah. take it. Uh, well, it's been fantastic, mate. Um, if you haven't seen, I don't know if the video's gone out on the channel the time you're seeing this, but if you haven't seen the, the game where we win the league, look out for a James Lovett wonder goal. I never thought I'd say Absolutely that sentence. Ridiculous. But, uh, oh, it's 78 yards out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just stay tuned, you have to judge it for yourself. Watch the goal, but Stampy, congratulations. Thoroughly deserve it, mate. Well done. <laughs> Honestly, I really didn't expect it that much. Like, I have to shout out all my boys who play on Sundays. Like, it makes it extra special knowing that they voted for me. So it means a lot. And this is for them as well. So shout out to them. I just turn up and vlog. That's all I do. So to get some recognition for it is amazing. So shout out all my Sunday boys. Double champs as well. I'll take it. But we want the same again next season. We're at the top of the Prem. So it's all to play for. But we got it in us. We're good. Our final Sunday award now. Uh, this one is the manager's player of the year, whatever you want to call it. I've decided this one. This one's going to a player who I think I'm right in saying, if not has been ever present, has been very close to ever present, making himself available for every game. Doesn't get the credit he deserves, in my opinion. I personally give him a little bit of a hard time, um, but I'm glad I do because we get the best out of him as a result. Uh, he's had the most goals for us this season, 23 goals. The joint most assists, 10 assists. And it's an amazing attitude. And I have to say, the Sunday player of the season, 2018-2019, George Valentine. We dropped the name Messi, we dropped it. We were advised by devs it wasn't the best look. But 
You've been fantastic this season, George. Thank you. Loads of goals, loads of assists, running up and down all day long. Have you enjoyed the season? Loved it, especially with the boys, especially winning the league as well. From last season, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. And also, again, George is an example of someone who's put in good performances in the, in the uh, Sunday team. He's got rewarded with some opportunity in the first team, so really happy to see that. Thoroughly deserved, mate. Fantastic season. Love your attitude. Well done. Thank you. Buzzing. I'm, I'm actually surprised. Uh, I'm just happy that we won the league. If it weren't for the boys, I wouldn't have won this, so it's all down to them, really. Players, player of the season. You know how this one works. The players vote for it. And to award it is someone I think awarded this trophy this time last year. Stevie CB, up you come. So in third place, Jack Harrison. In second place, Jamie Jackson, a.k.a. Jacko. The winner, big round of applause, is for I. I scouted him. I found him. I don't know if I've told anyone. I told everyone a lot of times. LP, shout out to you. We went to watch uh, a, a Sunday League final that was happening at Brentwood Town's ground because we had a Sunday, this is last season, we had a, a, um, a final the other week after. I wanted to just check the surface, you know, I was doing my due diligence. <laughs> and uh, I saw this strapping young lad playing centre back, dominating the defence. LP knew him, told me about him. And then I oh, told so Debs about him and the rest was history. You know, new, new to the squad, you played a little bit of right back. But once you got in that centre back position, you made it your own, mate. The stats don't lie, unbelievable season. Uh, how have you found it? Yeah, it's been difficult. I mean, the first few games, obviously, I didn't play too much. But, I mean, I was patient. And, obviously, once I got the opportunity, I uh, just jumped in it, really. Yeah, buzzing. And how do you feel for next season? Looking forward to going again at a step higher? Yeah, I'm hungry than ever. I'm Good ready. <laughs> right, for Ice Ingarno. Honestly, it feels great to be recognised by my teammates. It's nice coming from them because, obviously, it shows that, you know, all my hard work's not going unnoticed. So, it's amazing, honestly. It really is. It's gone all serious. <laughs> I mean, it's true though, honestly, it's nice to, you know, get recognised from my teammates, so I can't, can't complain at all. This is the big one. This, formerly known as, the, there's been a lot of rebranding this year, formerly known as the Chairman's Player of the Year. I mean, three years in a row the Chairman's not turned up, so unacceptable. We've dropped that now, come on, it's me, everyone figured it out. Um, <laughs> do you not know? I was FIFA player as well. Um, cats out the bag. Uh, obviously, Devs is going to give this one out. Devs have decided this manager player of the season. We've all, as well as the award here, we've got this shield, which I won't turn around yet because it has the winner's name engraved on it. But um, the previous two winners of this, uh, Rich Beck won it in 2016. Sam Adams won it in 2017 to uh, award the manager player of the year for 2018-2019. Jay Devereux, everyone. Um, we've had some outstanding performance this season. Uh, my player of the year is someone who has contributed defensively to the amount of clean sheets that we've, we've had the, and, and the fact that we've conceded less goals than any other side in the league. But also offensively has, has, has shipped in with a, a uh, he will tell you, significant amount of goals. My player of the year this season goes to, to our, our captain, um, Jack Harrison. <laughs> There were handles on these things before tonight. Got a few more words oh. yet, Jack, before you get, get off. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this down, down over here. Oh, you can, do you want to hold it? Yeah, we'll yeah. look after it. No, 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 I don't want to hold it. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold it in a minute. It's a bubble wrap everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jack, well done. Congratulations. Interestingly, I don't know if there's a pattern here or not. I'm seeing, seeing things where there shouldn't be, but three centre-backs, three years, won this award. He followed in the, the big footsteps of Sam Adams and Rich Beck. Yes. Um, how do you feel to be the manager's player of the year? First ever manager's player of the year. In that, in the yeah, I feel very privileged. I mean, not, I obviously wouldn't vote for my, I mean, I did vote for myself as player's player, but <laughs> not for the manager's player. Um, yeah, no, I think as a team, obviously we played really well. Everyone, I mean, personally, defence was massive this season for us. And we obviously sort of shipped in less goals than anyone in the league. Um, I thought everyone played exceptionally well to sort of do that for us. Yeah, I've, I mean, very happy. Unexpected, until he said about the goals. <laughs> you knew, yeah. Hey, yeah. 
Listen, fantastic season, and I think I echo what Dev said. There's a lot of players that could have won this, but I'm very happy to see you win it. Captain Jack, everyone. Cheers. Uh, a little bit lighter. It's amazing what 50 quid can do, but um, no, yeah, really good. Like, really happy. Um, yeah, I was going to say, any one of our, personally, I think any one of our defence could have won the sort of manager's player. I think out of the whole of us, sort of the defence have sort of really shone through, conceding the least goals in the division. Like in the division. Um, but yeah, no, I'm very happy, surprised. Hall of Fame induction. Woo! It's another new thing. Um, this is going to be here to stay. We're going to do this every single year. Um, we're going to induct one person, one person only each year. To present this one, someone that's surely assuring to get in the Hall of Fame one day himself. Sevy boy. Wow. <laughs> Hall of Fame is something very special. Um, known throughout all sorts of sports organisations as you know, a legendary status and we have got a lot of legends in this room but only one of them will join that officially this evening and um, what I'm going to do to announce this, a lot, a lot of you maybe will figure this out as I go on but I want us just to sit for a moment and listen to some of the things that this man has achieved while, while, while playing for Hashtag United. 63 goals in 47 games in Chapter 1, the top goal scorer for Chapter 1. A goals per game ratio of 1.34. That's more, more than a goal per game. You can do the maths. 25 assists as well. He wasn't setting himself up. The third most in Chapter 1. The most Man of the Match awards in Chapter 1 with eight Man of the Matches. Six goals when we started Chapter 2 in pre-season. Two of them hat-tricks. 69 goals in total. Top goal scorer and Players Player of the Year at both 2016 and 2017 awards. He scored at Wembley for Hashtag on two different occasions. He scored in America, in Northern Ireland, in Serbia. He scored four in Spain. Four goals against Biggleswade. Scored versus Palmers. Two versus New Haven. Two versus Eltham. He scored at the Emirates, Selhurst Park, and scored four at Stoke City. The first ever inductee into the Hashtag United Hall of Fame is my friend, your friend, hashtag hero, Dan Brown. Dan Brown, Dan bloody Brown. Where you been all season, Dan? Everyone's been asking. <laughs> Where have I been? <laughs> we lost Dan's services shortly into the season, put an amazing shift getting down to the first few games. Long journey, three kids. It's also like 30, 35 now, are you? Yeah. Getting there. Sorry to be <laughs> no, spoiler alert. Life. But you know, <laughs> people seem to be surprised in the comments why Dan would, would would sort of, you know, step aside. It was a well earned break from an amazing shift he put in for us. But that was also a testament to the amount of people that wanted to see him play. There is no doubt in my mind we would not be where we were if it wasn't for his goals. The amount of goals this guy scored, the amount of games he won us, and you can't underplay how important it was that we won some of those games and, and the amount of games we won to keep the interest going. And despite what many people will tell you. We, anyone that's ever played for Hashtag knows, we go on the pitch and we play and we don't know what's going to happen. But having him with us was huge. So Dan Brown, absolute pleasure to put you in the Hall of Fame. And long may you stay there. You're going to stay there forever, unless you get involved in any kind of scandal. Thank you. I'm shocked, I'm surprised. I, I come here tonight, Jacko, I say differently. <laughs> but not to get an award, but to see these boys get... <laughs> but but no, to come here and pay tribute to all the lads, Devs, yourself, Seb, uh, everyone for what you've done this season. I mean, I've I've gone from last year and the year before being a player and being part of it to now. I'm a fan. I'm in the garden with my little boy. Um, he'll be Harry Honesty and I'll be Neil Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Scoring you, got, you got the short <laughs> straw there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's changed completely, but it's, it's amazing to be part of it all. And thank you so much to everybody for making me feel so welcome. Like I come in here tonight and everyone's shaking my hand, cuddling me. It's... Uh, it's very, very moving. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing to still be part of this and I, I hope to be so for years to come. So thank you so much to all the fans, to yourselves and to all the players and uh, massive accolade to you guys for winning that league. Dan Brown. The Hall of Fame, amazing. I didn't expect that in any way and it's, uh, I won't lie, it meant an awful lot to me. But let's not forget, tonight's about the boys, what they've done last season, winning the league. And yeah, so don't forget to hashtag it. Club announcement. 
It's not that we're signing Theo Baker, that was the first year. We have one more announcement before we wrap things up uh, and let our hair down for the evening with a much, much deserved reward party. But rather than me announce it, I'm going to let a little friend of ours announce it for us. Hashtag United, there's one more match left for you this season. I heard you're coming to Old Trafford. Good luck against Tango Squad FC. Not many people get to play on Old Trafford, so when you're there, you got to embrace it, take it all in. Enjoy the occasion, play with a smile on your face and enjoy the game. We're going to Old Trafford, guys. Decent, decent. Uh, we're taking on the Adidas Tango squad. This is a reward, obviously, for all your hard work, getting to play at an amazing stadium like that. We're also going to get to train at Carrington beforehand, the day before. So unbelievable facilities uh, and a, a good reward for all your hard work. So that's coming up. Look forward to that. Almost done now. Before I finish, I don't want to get too sickly sweet, but I want to get one more person up to say thank you. We've kind of done it already, but we cannot... We talked about all the things that have happened this year. We talk about all the people off the pitch, on the pitch. We talk about some amazing performances, lots of goals, lots of assists, lots of clean sheets for Jacko. Amazing things. But everyone knows the man that's held it all together this year. Let's get Devs up one more time. Unbelievable. When we met you many years ago, uh, seven years ago, I think maybe 2012 it was, um, I was just a guy with a camera wanting to come and film some, some non-league. I didn't have any subscribers. Really, nothing of note. I uh, just wanted to make some football videos. My dad gave me an intro to John Coventry, manager, still manager at Historic. And um, obviously met you. Met you, met Ellis. Who, how old are you now, Ellis? So you, I think you were six. When you... One three, not three oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not that old. He was just as keen, to be fair, Ellis was back then. He loves, and it's great that he's involved in hashtag now. Um, how far we've come. The big thing for me, we talk about levels and, and, and we talk about, you know, the the club and how big and this is this is a huge club whatever way you look at it it's but the thing for me the thing that struck me when you asked me to come along I remember standing outside the changing rooms at New River waiting to get in and none of the guys knew where I was um, and all I could hear was enthusiasm for the game and I've been in lots of football changing rooms where the last thing people want to talk about is football and it was, it was strange. It was a Sunday afternoon, I think, a four or five o'clock kickoff against one of your countries. We beat some countries, we did. We yeah. beat their countries. Um, and all I could hear was guys talking about the games that had been played at you know, the midday kickoffs and, and the enthusiasm. For, and I thought, I can work with these people because they love football. And it doesn't matter about the level you're at. If there's an enthusiasm for the game, then you'll do all right and you'll be okay. Uh, and as long as we retain that enthusiasm, whatever we do, we're, we go going forward, we'll be okay. We'll have lows because we're gonna be, if we're going to be a proper football club, there's going to be some real, real lows because you have to experience them to enjoy the heights. So that was that was a, that was a big moment for me. Fantastic, Jay Dever, everyone. <laughs> right, that is the end of our awards. Um, I will let you get off soon and, and get some drinks down you and do what you need to do this evening. I just want to say a few things for myself. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone for the hard work they've put in. Off-pitch guys, media guys, Neil Smythe, what a signing he was, by the way. What a signing. Uh, I can't name everyone, but you know who you are. It's people that aren't here, people that aren't here as well that have been fantastic this year. Wouldn't be the same without you, so thank you to everyone. Uh, this past year for me, we've gone from being a, 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 I'm actually nicking this line from Daniel's dissertation. We've gone from being a YouTube football team to a football team that's on YouTube. That's what we've changed. We've also gone from a group of mates to a family. That's what we've done. This is a club. This is a club that was born out of dreaming big. So let's keep dreaming big. And remember, dreams don't just come true by accident or by luck. It's the work we put in every single day that YouTube viewers don't always see. It's the training, it's the eating right, it's the injury rehab, it's the running, it's the many rejections and disappointments that come along. It's the long drives, Jacko. It's the traffic jams, it's the late nights, the early starts. It's the blood, sweat and tears. It's all these things wrapped up into one. That's what makes dreams come true. That's what made my dreams come true this season. So thank you for that. I challenge you all to do it again next season. Let's never stop dreaming, 
I feel like Glenn Tampton right now. How long is this going to go on for? Let's never stop dreaming. It's what makes our club special. The funny thing about dreams is you can never run out of them. There'll always be something bigger and shinier for us to aim for. That comes with the territory, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But let's also remember that just by getting to do what we do right now, every day, means we're already living the dream. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to hashtag it. Come on!